Hi everybody, my name is Joey Lin. I'm a test preparation expert here at Think Prep. I've been prepping students all year for the AP Physics 1 exam, so I thought to help you all out, um, for those of you preparing for the second and the third administration, that I'd go over the free response questions that were just released. This is from the test from the first administration, so hopefully those of you studying will get some use out of this. So what do we have? We have this stunt cyclist that's building a ramp and it'll allow cyclists to coast down the ramp and jump over. So I'm assuming this coast means no friction maybe. Unless it says friction, we're gonna assume frictionless, I guess, because that'll make the computations easier. Um, and then we have the cyclist starting from the top of the ramp and leaving the ramp and landing at the top of the second ramp. And then we have starts from rest, right? So the V naught here is zero. And then we have all these symbols here and it wants us to derive an expression for X naught in terms of all these other variables that we have, or I guess they're constants here. So anytime I see something changing height, I'm gonna do conservation of energy, right? He starts off with potential energy and then it's going to be converted into kinetic energy over there. So let's do that. So here we have M G H naught is equal to one half M V squared. And then the m's cancel out, so then we get uh, 2gh, because I'm going to multiply both sides by 2, is equal to v squared. So then the velocity when the cyclist reaches the end of the ramp will be this, and y'all should know this one. This is a pretty common formula that you need to know on a frictionless ramp or something that's sliding down a ramp with a, or changing height even, free fall, without friction or air resistance. So... That part's not too bad, but then the confusing part comes here, right? So when we have the velocity leaving the ramp, the velocity is happening at an angle over here. And that angle happens to equal this theta naught. And then if we need to split up our velocity into its components, this one's the opposite side. So this will be V sine theta naught, and then this will be V cosine theta naught. Okay, so this is the pretty standard decomposition of a right triangle. And so now we have this whole set of kinematics here, right? So in order for us to find the distance, first off, we need to find the time it takes for the cyclist to jump all the way across the ramp. We're gonna use that by, we're gonna find that by using the vertical components. So we can use a couple of these equations here, but the one that uses time would probably be best as this one. So this uh, change in distance is equal to the initial velocity plus one half at squared. So we're doing it in the vertical direction though. So this would represent the change in height. Well, what do we want the change in height to be? Well, if the person's starting here and ending here, the change in height is just zero. So that's what we're gonna plug in for the change in height. For the vertical velocity, we know that that's equal to V sine theta naught. We just did that a second ago. And then this is time. And then what is acceleration here? We're gonna treat that as gravity. And then that's t squared. So anytime something's equal to zero, we can factor out any like term. So we have a t that we can factor out. So then this becomes t v sine theta naught plus one half gt. Now, if we have these two things equal to zero and as a product, we can set each of the individual factors equal to zero. Well, that's t equals zero. That's not going to be useful because that's the time the cyclist leaves the ramp. But then we can set this one equal to zero, right? So if we do that, I want to solve for t, right? So I'm going to minus the v sine theta over. So then this is 1 half gt is equal to negative v sine theta. And then so I'm going to times both sides by 2 and divide it by g. So then I can get that the time is equal to negative 2 v sine theta naught all over g. So that's the time it takes for it to go across the ramp. And then the horizontal component is usually pretty easy. There's no air resistance or friction here. So this horizontal component is going to stay constant at V cosine theta. So then if we just want the distance, the distance is just going to be the velocity times the time in the air. Well, what is that horizontal component of velocity? We did that a second ago. That's V cosine theta naught. And then we have the time, which we did as negative 2v sine theta naught over uh, g. Um, are we allowed to use the v here? Shoot, we're not allowed to use this v. So that's even worse, right? So if we simplify this, this these two things become v squared, right? So I'm going to cancel this out and put a v squared here. So then 
Well, what was v squared earlier? Well, if this is v, then v squared is, oh, I don't need to even write v squared. This is our v squared. So now we're going to plug that in because they didn't let us use v, right? So the final answer should be this is equal to, let's see, that is 2gh. So that's for the this thing. And then I can combine these two over here, right? So this is a negative 2. So actually, I can take this and make this a negative 4 gh. Uh, times sine theta, cosine theta, all over g. And then the g's cancel out. I'll just get rid of those g's. And that'll be your answer. Always remember to check sure that you're using the appropriate constants, because this is true, just not appropriate. Then it says, if the vertical distance between the top of the first ramp and the launch point were 2HO instead of HO with no other changes to the first ramp, what is the maximum number of cars that the cyclist could jump over? So let's go back to our equation over here. So I can copy paste this whole thing then. So let's copy that. And let's see. Command C. Command V. Let's put this over here. So if we were to do this, okay, so we're replacing this with a 2HO instead of H, and notice that this, the X naught is directly proportional to this A H naught since they're both first degree. So then we could just say the XO would double. And then we could say because. And then if you don't want to write it out, you can use this symbol. This is directly proportional. This is not an alpha. So XO is directly proportional to H naught. Um, and then we can say, well, how many cars was it at the beginning? It was um, six cars, right? So then it'd be 12 cars. Therefore, cyclist could jump over 12 cars. And of course, when you're writing this out, you want to make sure that you're using complete sentences. Don't use symbols like me. I'm just doing this for informational purposes. On the axis below, sketch a graph of the vertical component of the stunt cyclist velocity as a function of time immediately after the cyclist leaves the ramp to immediately before the cyclist lands on the second ramp. On the vertical axis, clearly indicate the initial and final velocity components in terms of HO, theta O, and MO. Okay. So we know that the starting component was v sine theta, right? But we can't use v, so we have to use this term over here. So instead of v sine theta, it's read 2gh naught. So then the starting velocity, I'll just start here. This is uh, rad 2gh naught, and then we'll put this sine theta in front. And these match, right? h naught, theta naught, m naught. Okay, great. So that's the initial velocity. Um, and then to finally leave the ramp, right? So because gravity is constant, we're going to have a constant slope then. And then you're allowed a ruler, so we would have it like this. And then if you want to label this part, do they a uh, final velocity, right? So the final velocity would just be the exact opposite. So this would be negative sine theta naught rad to g h naught. And there you go. That's that one. Okay, so that's part one. Let's see, now how would I award points then? Let's change my color here. This is a seven point question, so let's go backwards then, because I think going forward might be too tricky. So backwards here, I think, um, I think you get a point here for the right starting point, and I think you get a point for a some sort of line here. And I think it needs to cross through, and it needs to start as high as it is below. So linear graph. Okay, so this would probably be two points. I think over here is a single point for making sure that you get the right answer with the proper justification. Anything showing that you know that x naught is directly proportional to h naught. And remember, if you get the wrong derivation in part one, it's okay as long as you correctly indicate your answer as it pertains to your equation from before. So as long as those two match, I think you could still earn the point here. Um, if you have any questions about that one and you got a different answer than I did, feel free to leave a comment below so I can try to see if you might get the point there. 
And then let's see. So I think this had so much work in it. So I think this would get four points. I think you get one point for showing the conservation of energy right here. Um, I think you get one point for somehow getting the right um, kinematics here and getting this sort of time. So using these kinematics here for getting the right time. I think you probably get one point for doing this one over here. So one point for the y variables, somehow getting the time here. One point for showing that you know that the horizontal distance is measured by v times t just because everything's constant. And then I think you'd get uh, one point for not making any careless errors here. So the AP physics thing is kind of weird that they don't have specific answers a lot of times. But along the way, I think as long as you show an understanding of this, that's how the four points would be distributed. Ooh, you know what could be the case too? I think you might get one point here for probably knowing that this is split up into two components. So in the kinematics, there's going to be two points somehow for getting the right time and then maybe getting the right components is how I'd say. So I'm going to take away this one probably. So that's my guess for this whole thing. So four points here, one point here, and then two points here. Feel free to leave me any comments below. This is just a guess at the point system, so I'd be interested to see how I do in a couple months.